Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about veterans' benefits or military benefits in general that you might have. Now, if you're in the military, you probably are already aware of these benefits, so this video might not be for you. But for those of you who are considering joining the military someday, I'd like to cover some of the benefits that might be coming your way. Now, as you know, you probably guessed being in the military does have its own set of risks. You could get injured, you could get killed, um, depending on the d different deployments you might be in. It could be a training accident. It's not the safest occupation, but uh, for the most part, it is fairly safe these days. We're not fighting World War One or World War II or anything like that, but um, there's definitely still danger in being in the military. However, there are some benefits that you can get as well. Now, uh, my perspective is I'm, uh, I was in the Air Force for 20 years, so that's my background. I did 20 years as a, um, a few different things. I did uh, computer programming. I was a cyber officer for a little bit, and then I became a missileer. Then I became a space operations officer, and then finally I was an instructor at ROTC at a college. So I did a bunch of different things. But uh, now that I'm retired, I actually teach junior ROTC. And my, in my experience, the benefits that I got from the military definitely helped me get a leg up just in general in life and, uh, and really helped me out. I used my GI Bill to uh, go to college and get my degree without having to pay anything out of pocket. So um, it was actually quite good. I'm gonna go over, so I'm gonna go over a few things. I'm gonna cover the education benefits. I'm gonna cover uh, home loan benefits, healthcare, retirement, and finally disability. Disability you can get if you're, even if you don't retire, you can still apply for disability. So starting off with the GI Bill, the post 9-11 GI Bill is what it's called now. When I did it, it was called the Montgomery GI Bill. They basically gave me about 1,100 bucks a month. And I took that money, I paid for my tuition for my, uh, I paid my tuition, like any fund fees, and whatever was left over, I put towards rent or something like that. So I was, it was not a bad deal. I did not have to pay anything out of pocket. But it's even better these days. With the post 9-11 GI Bill, as long as you do 36 months active duty, you qualify for 100% of the post 9-11 GI Bill benefit. Now, if you do less than that, it, it kind of stair steps down. Maybe it's like 33 months, you get 90%, 30 months, you get 80%, things like that. So. That's how that uh, is going to work for you. It's going to cover tuition and fees and books. Now, when I say tuition and fees and books, that's at a public university. So any state school that you're going to go to, it's going to cover the tuition, fees, and books. It's going to pay that tuition directly. You can work with your the VA office in that school, and they will help you set that up. And uh, it's going to so it's going to pay that. And then besides tuition, fees, and books, it's going to pay for pay you a housing allowance. So the housing allowance is based on what an E5 would get in that area for housing. So for example, in, in Indianapolis, in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, you're going to be looking at about $1,300 a month, which isn't bad. And But if you're in like, say, Boston, Massachusetts, you're going to be looking at over $3,400 a month because it's more expensive to live there. So it really depends on what zip code you're in. But I think even the, the lowest end, lowest cost of living in the U.S., you're still going to be getting about $1,000 a month. So that really helps out with rent and some food, that sort of thing. That's why I kind of call this a full ride. Full ride, kind of a scholarship sort of thing, is what the GI Bill basically is. Speaking of that, we also have tuition assistance. Tuition assistance is what you're going to use when you're on active duty. You're on active duty, you want to take some classes towards your degree, so you go to your education office and you ask about tuition assistance. They will cover $250 per semester hour, up to $4,500 per year. That's the cap. A lot of online universities, for example, will actually uh, work with you on so, this. So, some so. online universities are set up to work with the military. That will cover it right there and you won't have to pay anything out of pocket. But if it's like $300 per semester hour, then you'll have to pay that 50 bucks. And this does not incur, this does not take away any of your uh, post 9-11 GI Bill. You get pretty much an unlimited amount of this. Um, the only thing you incur by doing tuition assistance is if you are, uh, if you are an officer, you incur a two-year active duty service commitment on top of that for every tuition assistance that you take. That means you have to do two more years active duty for every tuition assistance class you take. So theoretically, you could take night classes and take a class here, a class there, and work up towards getting your 
bachelor's degree while you're on active duty. And if you do that, then when you do eventually get out of the military, transition out, you can transfer those GI Bill benefits to your spouse or your ch children. I, for example, I've only actually used 26 months of mine, and so I have 10 months left that I can transfer to five months to each kid. If I want, I have two kids, I can transfer five months to each kid. So those are two really good benefits right there. Education-wise, you, you can get your degree and you won't have to be in debt. Uh, another thing that they pay for is they will pay for some trade schools. So you'd have to look into that on a case-by-case -case basis, but they will pay, for, pay you to go to trade school as well. And they will pay for certain certifications through the uh, post 9 GI Bill. But those are, are going to be... Uh, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, see if that if your particular school is qualifies for that. And, and the last thing on education that you can get is you can take CLEP tests and uh, Dante's tests for free in the military. You're active duty, you go to your education office. Say you're real smart in like math, you can take uh, algebra, CLEP, college algebra, for example. When I first got in, I took uh, college algebra and trigonometry, and I passed both of those. So then that was giving me like I think I got six credits for college algebra and three for the trigonometry. So I was already up nine credit hours there. In addition to the, the college credit I got for my tech school. So um, I was already well on my way. All right, the second benefit that I'm gonna talk about is the VA home loan. So the VA home loan is a, uh, is a method for active duty and veterans to get a home loan. And um, you might be asking, well, what's the difference between a VA home loan and a regular home loan? Well, the main difference is there's two main differences that I that I can that I've determined. One is you don't have to pay PMI, which is, which is um, private mortgage insurance. If you don't have 20% down on your home loan, you're going to have to pay PMI. But with a VA home loan, you don't have to pay PMI. And speaking of down payments, you don't have to put anything down in order to get going with a VA home loan. So those are the two big benefits. To uh, but it's not. I don't feel like it's the best uh, benefit really. As far as uh, loans go, I've gotten, I have currently gotten one, two, five. I've currently gotten five uh, mortgage loans in my life, and I have not ever done the VA home loan. I've always put down 20%, and I've gone that way instead. There is a funding fee that's worked into your home loan that um, is kind of like the equivalent cost of PMI. So not exactly the best deal, but um, they do say that you can sometimes get a lower interest rate with the VA home loan than you can with a conventional home loan, but I haven't actually done that myself. Those are, but those are the main two uh, benefits of that. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about healthcare. So active duty military, you get sick, you go to the hospital, I'll take care of you, fix you up, give you your prescription for whatever you might need to fix you up. And it doesn't cost you anything. There's no co-pays. There's no monthly insurance cost. It's just totally free. That's for you and your dependents. You get married, you have a spouse, kids, same thing with them. They get sick, go to the hospital, no monthly payments, no copay. You just go get taken care of and you don't have to worry about having to pay for health insurance and things like that. One thing that uh, is not covered for your family, however, is dental. So be aware, your dental will be paid for, but your, your dependents' dental, you'll have to get a dental program on that. It's a great benefit because healthcare is expensive these days and you want to be able to... Uh, have that security in your family. The next big one I'm going to talk about is retirement. So retirement has uh, changed from back when I was what I was under. Retirement now is called the blended retirement system. So it has kind of like a three-legged sort of a, a retirement system. In the old system, you can well in the old and the new system, you can't retire until you got 20 years in at least. And for every year you have in. That gives you 2% of your base pay towards retirement. So do the math on that. You do 20 years, then you're going to be getting 40% of your base pay from then on. And so if you do 23 years, then you're going to have 46% of your base pay and, and so on. All the way up to usually 30 years is when you'll probably have to get out unless you're a general or something like that. Or unless you have prior enlisted time blended with. Uh, officer time, then you can do more than 30. But um, if you manage to go to 40, then guess what? You're going to have 80% of your of your base pay is going to be with you for the rest of your life every month. And, that, and uh, that happens right away. So I retired, I was 41. And 
that next month I got my first ret retirement check at 41. So I get that every month and it's a pretty good deal. I can definitely attest to that. I don't have to necessarily find a job, but, um, but I have, uh, the current job I have is I teach our uh, JROTC at high school and I would not be eligible to take to, um, I would not be eligible for this job unless I was already retired officer or a retired enlisted person in the air force. I can do AF, Air Force JROTC and the same thing for Army JROTC, Navy and Marine JROTC. So other than the pension, the other part is the 401k type thing. It's called, it's TSP, which stands for Thrift Savings Program. It's a DOD retirement program. Now, as soon as you get into the military, the DOD will start putting away 1% of your base pay into this TSP automatically, 1%. So you already got that rolling. Now, once you get past your second year, start your third year, then you can contribute up to 5% of your base pay and the DOD will match that. So then you put it, so you're basically putting in 5% of your base pay, but you're getting 10% of your base pay into your retirement account. Now, this is important. If you're going to go into the military, I definitely recommend doing this, maxing that out, taking a look at the funds that you're invested in, because there's about five different funds you can choose from. The default fund is going to be the one that's going to give you the least, probably the least overall risk, but it's also going to give you the least returns. So you got to look at that. Um, I usually go with the total stock market one, the S fund, but that's me and um, you can do whatever you want. So so that's definitely a no brainer. So that's the second leg of the retirement stool. You got your pension and then you got your 401k. So then if you leave it at any point, you take that 401k with you, which is kind of a good benefit. You might not get the pension because you didn't do 20, but you get this. And which brings me to my third, the third leg of the retirement system, which is uh, the continuation pay. So once you get to, to do 12 years, you'll get uh, a lump sum. It's, uh, it depends on your, it's a multiplier of your base pay and it depends on how much of a in demand your career field is, how critically manned they are, how whatever they do to figure this out. I'm not exactly sure, but it's anywhere from 0.5. Yeah, it's either a uh, half or up to six times monthly base pay. So if your base, if you've uh, been in for a while, so your base pay is um, $5,000 a month. So you could, once you do 12 years, you could get a lump sum of say 2,500 a month, all the way up to $30,000. I mean, not, not a month, just a lump sum. So if you're making $5,000 base pay, you could be getting any, it's a range. The least you'll get would be 2,500 bucks. Here you go, that's nice, 2,500 bucks. Get yourself a nice computer or something like that. Or it could be all the way up to $30,000 for you. So it's kind of a, a, it could be really great or it could be just, oh, that's pretty good, but not fantastic. but. It's money. Money is money. So that's the three things. You got your pension, you have your, your um, TSP, which is like a 401k retirement account, and then you have your continuation pay. There is one more thing I'm not going to really cover much because I would not recommend doing it. But at some point when you get around like 15, 16 uh, years in, you, there, you're going to be offered a lump sum of money by the military and by taking this lump sum of money, you are taking less of a percentage on your pension when you eventually get your pension. And um, it does not work out, the money does not work out on this. You're gonna make more money if you just hold off and don't take that lump sum and then take the full pension that you're gonna get. So you could retire at 20 years with a pretty decent um, retirement account and a pension, a pension as well as some, some change in your savings account if you've saved that money up. So that's an excellent uh, one, especially these days where there's not very many companies giving out pensions. Most of them are 401ks, 100% 401k. So you're at the mercy of the market. But this, in this case, you kind of have a, have a diversification going on. You can you get your pension action going on there, and then you got your 401k action going on there, and um, and then you get some continuation pay as well. All right, so I covered uh, that. Now let's get to the the last the last big benefit that I have here which is disability in the VA. No matter how long you've been in, you should definitely uh, be saving your medical records, do a records check when you get close to getting out and have a company help you with uh, your, your, dis your disability claim. The DAV and the American Legion are the number one and number two that I would go to on that. I would, uh, there are companies out there that want you to pay them like 20 grand to help you create your disability claim. I would definitely not do that. That's a, that's a waste of money, a scam in, in some cases. They should not be 
gouging you like that when there are organizations that are going to help you do that for totally free. So the DAV, which is a Disabled American Veterans, and then the American Legion, they have representatives in your area that will both help you look through your medical records and put in your, your disability claim with the VA. And if you, get, uh, if you do get disability at a certain rate, um, you're going to get a check every month for that as well. And additionally, anything that is that you have claimed as disability, you have to claim as much as you can on there. If you've gone to the doctor for something and it still persists, you need to get that documented so that from then on, that will be covered through the VA. So you don't have to go through your regular health insurance for that. You can go to the VA. So like, um, let's see, say you get sleep apnea when you're in the military. Now that's automatically, I think, like a 30% disability rating. I'm, don't quote me on that, but it's pretty high. It's automatic, pretty, it's pretty high. So anything related to that sleep apnea is going to be covered by the VA. Either you're going to go to a VA hospital or you can go to a hospital and the VA will cover it. Usually they want you to go to the VA hospital if at all possible. So that is definitely something you do not want to neglect doing because you need to take care of your health. And if you get out of the military, you'll realize that healthcare is very expensive. And if you do end up doing 20 years retirement, that gives you another benefit because you get to have retire military retiree healthcare. So military military retiree healthcare is very good. I think I'm paying like two, what am I paying? Paying like 300 bucks for the year for fees. And then uh, I do have to pay co-pays and things like that. But for my whole family, it's, it's only a few hundred bucks for the year and um, the co-pays aren't that bad. So um, I'm paying a lot less than I would be if I did not have the retirement health insurance. So definitely recommend that as well if you do. And I would recommend generally retirement if you can stick it out. The stats say that only 20% of people who join the military end up retiring after 20 years or more. So, um, but I definitely, if you can stick it out, I would recommend it because you get a lot more freedom with that pension coming in every month. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for today. I hope that uh, I've shed some light on the military benefits that you might have and maybe um, help you out with a decision on whether or not you wanted to join the military. Uh, I do think the military is a good thing to, to join. It, it was good for me. I met a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, interesting people I would not have met otherwise. I moved to a lot of different locations I never would have before. I've been uh, North Dakota, California, Texas, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Indiana, Colorado, and I did also spend a year in Afghanistan, which I give uh, one star out of 10 on that. Would not recommend going to Afghanistan. But um, it was an experience, and uh, it made, and I'm glad that I came back safe from that. All right. Well, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And have a great day, everybody.